So before I ever made my own candles or even had the thought of starting my own candle business, I worked as a front desk receptionist for a place called European Wax Center. This was a body waxing center. And what we had to do as a receptionist is it was kind of a receptionist slash sales job. And this is the only kind of sales job I've ever had, of course, before actually owning my own business, which feels like a full-time sales job. Um, but I actually had to upsell on a daily basis to every customer that came in to get a service done. So they were wanting to get their eyebrows waxed. As soon as they were done getting their service done, it was our job to try to upsell them on packages that would save them money where they purchase a certain amount of eyebrow waxes and get a certain amount for free. And that is something and a skill that I didn't know that was actually going to translate really well to local markets and working your own vendor booth. So that's what I wanted to talk about about in today's video and just share some insight I have into customer behavior of being able to read customers over those six years experience of trying to upsell because upselling is a really valuable skill to try to increase your sales at these local vendor events. Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Erica with Memory Box Candle Co. And I make videos all about the journey of starting a candle business. In today's video, we are talking all about local markets and specifically being able to read the customer's behavior to know how to direct them in the best way to complete the sale. So this is something that I have learned over the years of working front desk in that sales job that I was in. And I was able to really read the customer in front of me and know what packages I should offer them, if I should keep pushing, if I should try to hold back and kind of let them think. There's a lot of different behaviors that you can read with the customer. And that really is kind of what sales is all about is customer buying behavior. And when you're working a local market where you have all of your products around and people are kind of going back and forth between smelling all the different scents and asking you questions, you'll start to learn different customers and different behaviors that customers will um, show and whether or not you should try to upsell them on something or recommend a cheaper alternative to try to get them to buy something. So the first tip I have is to always greet everybody that comes into your booth and engage in even the slightest bit of conversation with them. Obviously, there's a lot of people that don't want to talk when they're in the booth and that's something that you will read right up front. So my question that I always ask almost everybody that walks into our booth is, you know, what kind of scents do you typically go for? Because it, that question allows them to tell me what their favorite scents are and everybody loves to you know, share that information about themselves, about what they like. And it also allows me to be able to direct them to a product that I think that they would want to purchase. So if somebody is like, oh, I really love like clean scents, then a lot of times we will direct them over to our Trips to Nowhere scent, which is sea minerals from Candle Science and that is like a clean beachy linen kind of scent. And a lot of times people will sometimes smell the scent that I recommend to them and they'll be like, okay, yes, I love that. I want to go for that. But if they walk into your booth, there's no conversation. They smell a couple candles and they're like, okay, maybe they don't have anything that I like because they don't know what you have. And a lot of times if they go through a couple candles and they're not a huge fan of them, they may just say thank you and then walk out. But if you can engage in some kind of conversation with them, that automatically opens up that communication and allows you to get to know them better and then be able to suggest something that you think that they would like. Now, there will be cer certain circumstances where a customer walks into your booth and you ask them, you know, oh, what kind of candle scents do you typically go for? And you'll get the response of, I don't know, anything, you know? And yeah, you can kind of keep you know, maybe mentioning things like, oh, do you really like coffee? What about lemon? What about lavender? Like, do you like any of those ones? And you can kind of bring things up. Chris is really good about doing that. Chris definitely has the sales approach of giving, talking a lot, giving information, suggesting, lots of suggesting. Um, and then I have more of the approach sometimes of 
holding back and letting the customer kind of think and look around and, you know, kind of do their own kind of solo shopping and then maybe throw some suggestions here and there. Um, and both ways can work really well. Chris is fantastic at selling at local markets and he has a completely different strategy than I do. So um, we all have our, you know, certain sales strategies, but this has been what I have found to work and really being able to read the customer in front of you. And that's the main thing is being able to read the behavior of the customer in front of you and everybody is gonna be unique. The second tip is to observe how they are interacting with your products. What are they looking at? What kind of questions are they asking? Are they asking, you know, is this the smallest size you have? How much is this? Oh, okay, this is 30, so then how much is this? You know, you can kind of see how people are interacting and what they're looking to spend and what they think is too much or a good price based on the questions that they ask you and their responses to your answers to those questions. So, you know, asking about the smallest sizes, price sheets, um, all that kind of stuff. That is something that comes into play, you know, oh, do you have, you know, is there anything a little bit less than this? You can kind of tell based on the questions that they're asking on what they're looking for when they come to your booth. The third tip I have is to know when to upsell and when to hold back a little bit and maybe when to downsell if you have to in order to get any kind of sale from the customer in front of you based on the behavior of the customer. So for instance, if somebody has been looking at a small candle and um, they keep kind of smelling it, maybe going back and forth between a couple of them, they've asked you a couple questions, there's been a little bit of communication with the customer. And if you interject into their thought process and say, hey, by the way, just so you know, we have a buy three, get one free of our large candles. It's $80 and you're saving X amount of money by doing that. For the customer in front of you that's just contemplating on whether or not they wanna spend $15 on a small candle, when they hear a really large number like that, it can maybe throw them off and could potentially make them be like, you know what? Uh, maybe maybe I won't, maybe I'll, maybe I'll just put this down and then ask for a business card, which could happen, or it could make them be like, oh no, I'm actually just you know wanting to get this, and they could you know go through with the purchase, but it could overwhelm them by trying to upsell something that's not relevant to them in that moment. Now, if you have a bundle deal for whatever smaller product that they are looking at, that may be a good time to upsell, but make sure that your upsells make sense for the customer in front of you. And then on the contrary to that, let's say you have somebody who is maybe very bubbly, they are like, oh my God, I love everything, and they're walking around your booth and smelling everything, and you can see that they're looking at the larger candles, and they're kind of going back and forth between some of the scents. That would be an excellent time to upsell something to where you can let them know, hey, by the way, if you're, you know, if you're kind of not knowing what scent to choose, I know it can be really hard, there's a lot of really good ones. We have a buy three, get one. So if you buy three, you get the fourth one free. So you can, you know, get that one free and save X amount of money. And that would be an appropriate time to try to upsell the customer. Now, um, there's also the scenario of downselling, which would be to, in a situation where let's say somebody is, looking at a large candle and they're asking you, you know, how much is this? And let's say it's $30 and they're like, oh, okay, um, all right, well, uh, thank you. And you know, you could be like, so that's 30, but we also do have the smaller candles, which is 15. And we do have wax melts where they're $6 each. And that may be, that sometimes will spark them and be like, oh, because they hear this, the, the lower number, instead of $30, they hear $6, and they're like, that's more doable for me. So instead of having them leave the booth altogether and not purchase anything, it's better to start to recommend the lower priced items so that they kind of have something that seems more attainable, more realistic for them to be spending in that moment. And then on the flip side of that, example, let's say you have somebody who shows interest in a more expensive item, but you can see that they're kind of going back and forth like, ah, oh, you know, I do really want to get this. And, and you see them more, the behavior is more showing that they do want to spend money on that. 
I would actually hold back on saying the prices of any of your less expensive options. So for instance, if you can tell that somebody is really wanting the large candle, a lot of times they'll be like, how much is this one? And if you say, oh, it's $30, and if they don't give any kind of adverse reaction to that, just kind of let them know the price and then maybe get more into the conversation of like, oh, do you really like that one? That one's one of our most popular ones. Um, you know, maybe even go into the upsell of the, of the larger candles because the goal is to increase your average order value, but it is meant to be doing it that way in a way that makes the most sense for the customer in front of you. So if somebody has been interested in the large candles and they are showing behaviors of they're more than likely they will want to purchase. They'll just try. They're just trying to figure out a scent. If you go into, you know, if they ask you how much a large candle is, and you say, "Oh, that one's thirty. Our smallers are fifteen. Our wax melts are six dollars." Like if you start bringing down the prices, a lot of times their attention will divert to the cheaper option. And that's what we had found out is that if somebody's asking how much something is, you can just leave it at that. And then based on their reaction, you can either save them by start to, by giving them other alternative options that are cheaper that they probably wouldn't have spent the money on that larger candle anyways. So it's saving the customer to, to purchase, to complete the purchase, um, and not just walking away from your booth. So it really just depends on how they are responding in that moment. So if you say the price of the large candle and they don't give any adverse reactions or they're like, oh, okay, like, like, you know, that's not that bad or whatever. Um, or they have somebody next to them and they're like, okay, which scent? So should we go with this one or should we go with this one kind of thing? Um, you don't want to just start throwing out like, oh yeah, we have all these other sizes that are more that are less expensive but if they show adverse reactions to it then that's when you can kind of be like but we do have the smaller sizes and we do have the wax melts if those are maybe something more of what you're looking for because ultimately you are wanting each and every person that walks into your booth to purchase something now of course that's not possible well it is possible but it's not always possible you can't control what somebody does um, but these are just ways where you can you can really examine the behavior of the customer in front of you and know when you should be upselling, know when you should hold back, know when you should throw out other options that are cheaper that maybe the customer would like better, and really just learning the behavior of each unique customer that walks into your booth. And the more you do local markets, the more you're going to learn about these things. And even just as simple as there are situations where, um, if you give a business card too early, it will deter the customer from making a purchase in that moment. That's what we also learned as well, is that if there's customers who are going back and forth between different scents, if you mention that you have a website, if you mention that you have a business card, whatever it is, a lot of times that is the customer's way out of making a purchase in that moment. And again, Chris and I learned that many times with different customer interactions and kind of had conversations about that, like, oh, maybe we should, maybe we should hold back on that, you know? Or even if there's somebody who's like, oh, well, maybe I can come back. How long have you guys been here kind of thing or whatever it is, try to, you know, be like, okay, well, if you're wanting to purchase this, we can put it off to the side for you. Or if you don't want to carry it around, you can make a purchase right now and then you can come back and grab it later, whatever it is. Um, just try to see if there's anything that you can do to get the sale in that moment. Because a lot of times when the customer walks away from your booth, I would say 10, maybe 15% of the time they actually do come back. But most of the time when they say they're going to be back, they don't end up coming back and it is what it is, but trying to get a sale with that customer in that moment is the most important thing because they're right in front of you. They've already smelled your product. They're in the moment of wanting to purchase from you. And it's just a matter of you trying to figure out in that moment, what's the best product for them um, and how you can make that happen. But overall, everybody is going to have different sales strategies. I have found that I hold back a little bit. I let the customer think. I, you know, interject with certain questions to try to direct them in the best way. Um, Chris is somebody who, I mean, he will 
upsell to pretty much everybody, which is honestly, I mean, it's a good strategy too. It really is because there have been situations where people have walked away from our booth and I look at him and I'm like, how did you do that? How did you do that? You know? So it, there are so many different strategies. This is just what I have learned based on customer behavior. And you're going to learn what works for you at your markets that you're at and kind of what feels the most comfortable for you to do. Um, for me, I feel more comfortable holding back a little bit. And Chris, I mean, he doesn't, he, he will say anything <laughs> to anybody. Um, he's gotten so many people over to our booth by just striking up conversations as they walk by. It's the best thing ever. But this is just some tips to keep in mind when you're at local markets to hopefully increase sales where you can start to read the customer behavior in front of you, or at least now you can be a little bit more aware of it if you weren't before and just practice with it. And it's not always going to be perfect. You're not always going to say the right things or do the right things. Um, but little by little, you're going to learn a lot more and be able to increase sales at your events. But with that, I am going to end today's video right here. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to leave it a big thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also, don't forget to follow me over on Instagram at Memory Box Candle Co. And I will see you in my next video.